Hey friends, uh, I'm back. Uh, so I've been hard at work on creating the ultimate guide to Airtable, which is now live. And in doing that, what I've realized is that there are so many folks who understand Airtable or want to, but uh, building bases is hard and they hit these challenges because there aren't that many real life kind of examples out there of how to build with Airtable. So I'm really excited to bring back this series where I help people fix their workflows. I'm calling it fix your workflow. Uh, you can submit a workflow that you'd like to bring into Airtable, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, so today we have our first example where Emily Giordano uh, wants to create a budget in Airtable. Uh, and she sent me this loom talking to you about the challenges of doing that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly listen to Emily's challenge here in a moment, and then I'm going to go into her base and fix her workflow. So. Without further ado, here's Emily with her challenges. I have been using Airtable for the past two months to manage my expenses and kind of like uh, see how much I've been spending and kind of get a more realistic budget week by month by month. Um, and so one thing that I would love to be able to do is to sum up um, uh, the amounts by category in another um, page. So let's just say for groceries, um, I would love to have like the amount that I budgeted for groceries um, in like over here and then have the ability to sum up uh, every time I add a field for groceries. And as this number gets bigger, then the budget that I have gets smaller and I can see how much I have left towards the end of the month. Um, and so that gives me a little bit better idea of uh, how much budget I have left. All right, let's jump into this base. Uh, I'm now in extension of this Airtable base here in the bottom right. Uh, so we're going to do this in four steps. Uh, first, what I always like to do is review the base structure. I think this is where uh, a lot of folks don't structure their bases properly. And this is the case for Emily here, no fault of her own, obviously. Um, so and then we're going to kind of identify the things we need to do to hit Emily's goal, which is tracking expenses per month and budgets per month per category. Um, so Emily here makes a mistake that is quite common where uh, she creates a table for uh, each month of transactions, right? So let's go June record. We have all of the expenses in June and then July record are all of the expenses in July. Uh, now in Airtable, you want your tables to be types of information you're tracking and to have all of that type of information in one table. So in this case, we should have a table called expenses where each record is an expense, whether it's incurred in July or June, we can manage using views. So one quick way to tell whether your base is properly structured uh, or a quick kind of tip, if you will, is that each one of your tables shouldn't have the same fields. So you shouldn't have two tables with the same fields. If I go over to June record, I see that it's exactly the same fields with the same categories. So usually that means you should create one table with both. I've gone ahead and done that. I've taken all of the expenses from June and brought them over to here. So we can actually go ahead and delete this table. Um, same thing for June and budget in July and June. Now this should be one table, but we need to think a little bit about how we want to do this. So the way Emily wants to track her expenses is being able to take every single expense in a month and then sum it by category and then track the expenses in that category versus the actual spend. So what Emily wants is a table where there's the month, the total expenses for that month, and then budget considerations. So what we actually need to do is create a table where we take each one of these transactions, tie them to a month, and then be able to roll up on that sum. Now, this is quite tricky for a beginner in Airtable to understand while we're doing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And uh, as I go along, I think you'll understand how this structure works. Okay, so first let's identify the month each of these transactions occur in. So I do have the date incurred, the date at which the transaction happened. So let's call this month. 
and we're going to use a formula field that extracts the month out of that date. So this is going to be date time format, right? So what we want is we want to take date incurred and output it as MMMN. Now there's a mapping. Uh, I actually found this on the community page. Thanks, Coolvone, for creating this. Um, so, and I'm going to link it in the description. Uh, so we have the month, so June, July, right? And now we want to tie each of these transactions to a concept of a month. So I want to be able to have a relationship between the transaction and the month. So in Airtable, when you want to track additional information about a specific set of information, you should think linked records, right? Again, this is a little tricky because we're linking on the concept of month, which we don't have in our table. But again, follow along with me and I think you'll get it once I get to the end. So I'm going to call this a new linked record. I'm going to create a new table. We're going to call this months or maybe we call it uh, budgets. That actually makes more sense. Budgets. Right, let's create a new field that creates a new table called budgets. And I'm simply going to copy paste the month over. What this is going to do is that it's going to create the concept of June in my budgets table. And it's going to associate all of these transactions to that concept of June. So if I go over to budgets, I have two records. I have June, I have July, and I have all of the transactions for each one of those months. So here is every single transaction in June. And here is every transaction in July. So hopefully it, this idea of linking to this new concept of month is starting to make sense. Because now what we can do is being able to sum all of our transactions for June and July, but also summing them by category, right? So right now we're tracking by month. Let's go ahead and sum the values of all the transactions in that month. So here I'm going to say total spend. And it's going to be a roll up field. A roll up field is go to every linked transaction and perform an operation. So we're going to go over to July. We want to take the amount and we want to sum the values of every single amount in all the linked records. So let's go ahead and create that field. And this is giving me the total I've spent or Emily has spent in this uh, fictional uh, edited transactions. Uh, so she spent 2,761, 3,225 in July. Now this isn't quite answering uh, Emily's challenge because this is only looking at the total amount spent. However, what Emily wants is being able to say, tell me how much I've spent on groceries in a specific month and then compare it with a budgeted amount that she set for herself, right? But now that we have this structure, it's, it seemed pretty clear how we do that. We want to go into the month of June, look at all these transactions and simply sum the ones that have a specific category and then compare it to a budget amount. So let's use cat groceries as an example. So I want total spent on groceries. Let's go ahead and create another roll up field exactly like the previous one. So we want to go ahead and go to the linked record, which I'm going to change the name in a moment, go into amount. We want to sum the values, right? So exactly the same as before. However, we only want to sum on certain records. We want to sum on those where the category is groceries. So let's create that field. And this is giving us our total spent on groceries for that month. So I'm going to rename this to expenses, right? And we should rename this table as well to expenses. So expenses, budgets, right? And now Emily's kind of ask is uh, being able to look at uh, total spent by Gabriel total spent by category, but also compare it to amount that she set for herself. So let's imagine we do budget for groceries. Hope this should be a number. Let's change that. Let's make this a, a currency. Apologies. Currency like that. 
And let's imagine she wants to spend 750 per month on groceries. Now we want to compare the, these two amounts to the actual, so we can create a uh, you know, uh, difference. So we're gonna take a formula field. We're gonna take budget for groceries minus total spent on groceries. Now you can get a little fancier here. We can make this a, a currency field. You can just simply check whether you're above or under that uh, amount and output text or whatever. That's really up to Emily. And then she can do this for each category, right? So groceries, you know, ultimately the, the, the world is her oyster from here. And so all Emily has to do with this structure is at the beginning of every month, go ahead and create a new August. And I'll talk about how do you link those, create budgets, and all of this will auto update once she connects the month to uh, the right kind of linked record of month. So let's go through how it feels to add a new kind of uh, transaction. Let's imagine we're adding in July. So let's say this is, you know, some dinner. Actually, let's go uh, groceries at Trader Joe's because apparently that is where people get their groceries. Groceries, let's say $250. We're gonna make this a need. Let's put this in July. You'll notice that July becomes a month. It extracts the month and then you copy paste. And then we should see an increase uh, of July grocery spend by 250, right? So it was about 800 something. Now it's 1,060 and we are now over budget by 310. And if we move this over to August, let's as an example, right, we see that uh, we need to update here like that because we've changed the month, right? We now see that we've spent 250 on groceries and let's say our budget is 750. We now have uh, 500 space in our budget. Now, um, you'll notice it's a little bit of a pain, right? Let's talk a little bit about how to improve uh, this base, where do you go from here, Emily? So you can create an automation that uh, whenever this is updated, you go ahead and take the value in month and paste it into budgets automatically. So you don't have to worry about this copy pasting. Another thing you can do is actually auto import your transactions uh, by connecting to your bank using Fintable. I'll include a video uh, link to a stream I did with uh, Isa, the, the founder. Uh, talking about how you can do that, but this structure is, you know, greatly improved from what you had before, right? So you've got your expenses in one place, your budgets in one place. You can actually go ahead and delete your other tables. You only need two tables to set this up. Um, and what you can do from here is go ahead and create different views, maybe per month, per category. You can go ahead and create interfaces on top, giving you dashboards of all of your transactions. So this was. Uh, your first, the first uh, fix your workflow. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed, if you've learned something from this. If you'd like to submit your workflow uh, that you'd like to fix in Airtable or bring into Airtable or you're facing some challenges, I'm gonna include a link in the description as well. Uh, really feels good to be back on the channel. I apologize for, uh, you know, the, I don't have the greatest lighting here or the greatest camera. I'm still getting set up in my new place. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, really excited to bring you uh, other uh, videos in this series. And I'll see you soon. See ya.